Turning down to new developments in the Aaron Hernandez murder trial. Let TV News photographer took the stand in the courtroom about four hours ago. Tonight, we have the details on what led to him being called out. And we remain on verdict watch as jurors deliberated for the third day in a row, totaling just under 16 hours so far in the process. Eyewitness News with live in-depth team coverage for you tonight at this high-profile court trial we've been tracking now for months. Target 12 investigator Walt Buteau standing by with today's information from deliberations. But first, we go out to Susan Campbell live outside court with more information on that TV news photographer taking the stand. This was all about the alleged harassment of jurors. Two of them reported being followed to their cars yesterday afternoon after deliberations wrapped up for the day. A TV news photographer banned from covering the Aaron Hernandez trial accused of tailing jurors to their cars. Did you believe at the time that what you were doing was improper in any way? At the time, no. Robert Cusinelli works for Boston's NBC affiliate WHDH. But he says Wednesday afternoon he went to scope out the lot where jurors park. Earlier in the day I was made aware that our station thought it would be good information to have the location where the jurors were getting on and off the bus. I was available and saw the opportunity to follow the bus and find the location where the jurors were parking their cars. Two jurors spotted him. One followed and took a photo of his company vehicle's license plate. This is an extraordinarily serious matter. Um, there is a uh, statute Publish, uh, I think it's a 10 year felony statute uh, that prohibits uh, uh, any form of uh, a juror uh, harassment. Both jurors said this incident would not affect their abilities to continue to serve as jurors on this case. On the stand, the photographer acknowledged that he made a mistake. Shannon and Mike. Susan, besides banning the photographer from covering the case, did the judge take any additional action against the television station? No, she didn't. Earlier in the day, she had threatened the possibility of banning the entire television station from the courthouse. But after hearing from the photographer on the stand, she decided that banning him from the courthouse was enough. It's Eyewitness News reporter Susan Campbell once again covering every detail of this high-profile trial. We'll see you at 6. Thank you, Susan. Now, the jury has been deliberating Aaron Hernandez's fate now for about 16 hours without coming up with a verdict, and they will return to court tomorrow for a fourth day. Target 12 investigator Walt Buteau is looking into the day's deliberations. He joins us live in Fall River with more in-depth coverage now. Well, the jury went home just a half hour ago, and sometimes the questions they ask can let us know how far along in the process they are. This morning, they wanted to know about ammunition and two pieces of evidence. The indictment narrows it to... The jury asked the court about two exhibits that they said they did not have. Copies of the two pictures, exhibits 22A and 22B, were then sent to the jury. The other question involved a box of 22 caliber ammunition that Judge Garsh said was found in Hernandez's home during a search warrant executed five days after Odin Lloyd's body was found. The jury wanted to know if the date mattered in determining whether or not Hernandez had constructive possession of the ammo. Does this mean that the accused had to have knowledge of the object's location on 622? The prosecution wanted the question answered no. The defense wanted the question answered yes. The judge decided to take a closer look at the bill of particulars before answering. I won't say it. And those questions this morning were the last we heard of the Hernandez jury. Live with the Mobile Newsroom with the Target 12 investigators in Fall River, Walt Buteau, Eyewitness News.